My name is John S. Seeberger, and I'll be presenting our study on people's experiences of the COVID-19 pandemic grounded in the context of smartphone apps designed to track and contain the spread of the pandemic. We refer to such apps as pandemic tracking apps. In this short video, I will provide a brief overview of our findings. For further detail, we encourage you to read the full paper. The study addressed two research questions. What are the perspectives of a diversity of individuals about pandemic tracking apps in relation to the vulnerabilities created by the pandemic? And how could we synthesize these perceptions and experiences to refine the understanding of the concept of vulnerability itself as it is applied in research and practice in human-computer interaction? To answer the research questions, we used a semi-structured interview protocol. The protocol covered three main topics. The impact of the pandemic on everyday life, opinions and experiences regarding smartphone apps designed for tracking and containing the spread of the pandemic, and the general views on the use of technology for the purposes of responding to the current pandemic as well as such public health matters that may arise in the future. We used the protocol to interview 23 participants from multiple regions across the world, 10 from the United States, 8 from India, and 5 from the Middle East and North Africa, i.e. the MENA region. When we conducted the interviews, the state of the COVID-19 pandemic in these regions was roughly similar. The sample contained an even proportion of males and females covering an age range from 20 to 66 years. We analyzed the transcripts of the interviews with reflexive thematic analysis with multiple iterations of coding and discussion among the authors. The iterative process identified three higher level themes. The thoughts of the participants about pandemic tracking apps, reports of various discomforting experiences describing the negative impacts of the pandemic, and concerns about the data practices of pandemic tracking apps. We briefly discuss each of these in turn. We found that most of the participants expressed positive attitudes about pandemic tracking apps as a means of pandemic mitigation, as illustrated by these example quotes from two of the participants. As the second quote demonstrates, the participants believed that pandemic tracking apps can be sufficiently powerful to force behavioral change upon their users. Even the small number of participants who did not hold outright positive views of pandemic tracking apps acknowledged the apparent necessity of such apps. The participants expressed their vulnerability to the pandemic through discussion of discomfort, as can be noted in these example quotes. Discomforting impacts described by the participants ran the gamut from interruptions of cherished routines to fundamental problems of sustenance and living arrangements. Since vulnerability can be considered a susceptibility toward harm, discomfort may be approached as an initial manifestation of vulnerability. It is possible for routinized, persistent discomfort to amount to notable harm. Alongside the persistent discomfort experienced during the pandemic, the participants routinely expressed long-term concerns regarding the expected data practices of pandemic tracking apps. The support for pandemic tracking apps was tempered by the recognition that the apps are, in and of themselves, a source of potential discomfort. Maintaining the privacy of one's bodily state becomes more difficult when data in the context of app culture implies the participation of unknown third parties. Persistent discomfort over the intangible losses of app culture translates to future-oriented vulnerability. Such vulnerability may be characterized through the lens of hyperbolic scaling, in which people assume that the privacy concerning characteristics of a specific app are generalizable to the other apps they use. In having been experienced, persistent discomfort describes and informs the expectations of everyday life in a person's life world. To get purchase on this accumulative process, we considered its temporal orientation. In considering the persistence of discomfort in the present as a harbinger of normalized vulnerability, we examined its relationship with the past such that expectations about daily life rooted in the way things have been are violated. We term this temporal facet of vulnerability in the present as real vulnerability. When considering the near future, we identified anticipatory vulnerability as a temporal facet wherein violations of what is expected in daily life in the present derail future plans. 
Logically, the temporal boundary between real and anticipatory vulnerabilities is porous. Anticipation is an experience that is real in the present tense. Thus, real and anticipatory vulnerabilities are both tied to the phenomenological present. Design efforts in human-computer interaction typically focus on shaping the proximal future. When the designed proximal future becomes the present, the iterative process continues. Our data suggests that the focus on the proximal future may not be adequate. To identify the sets of vulnerabilities that novel infrastructures, such as routinized use of apps for public health, will have given rise to in the future, we need to work around the entrenched relationship between the present and the proximal future. The combination of persistent discomfort in daily life during the COVID-19 pandemic and the worries about the data practices of pandemic tracking apps points to a third temporal facet of vulnerability. This is a complex facet manifest in hypothetical and conditional considerations of distant futures in which people imagine a new world in which a technology will have become a part of the infrastructure, with people having adapted to its use being a taken-for-granted aspect of everyday life. We refer to this facet as speculative vulnerability. The addition of speculative vulnerability completes the picture by incorporating considerations of distant futures and design efforts. Speculative vulnerability offers a conceptual framework through which we can identify conditions of normalized vulnerability that may characterize daily life in digitally transformed digital futures in which presently emergent or speculative infrastructures will have achieved invisibility. Instead of a specific concern for known individuals or subpopulations that presently face harm, speculative vulnerability is oriented toward a broad concern for future generations who will be born into the infrastructures we envision today as having been realized in the future. A focus on speculative vulnerability can enable designers to consider the effects of their designs on the humans situated in their life worlds, rather than on the reductionist users born of concern for the immediate impact of design choices based on the relationship between the present and proximal future. While technological solutions to the COVID-19 pandemic may be harbingers of vulnerability, such solutions also have the potential to serve as beacons for the ethical and transparent development of technology that does not rely on the economics of surveillance capitalism. The global reach of the pandemic presents as an opportunity to normalize more ethical design and deployment of technology. We are grateful to the participants of the study for their time. Feedback from anonymous peer reviewers helped us refine the contribution of the paper. The research reported in this paper was supported by a grant from the Economic Development Administration of the United States Department of Commerce. The contents of the paper in this video presentation are solely the work of the authors and do not necessarily reflect the views of the Economic Development Administration or the United States Department of Commerce. In conclusion, speculative vulnerability constitutes a lens through which one can engage in critical and infrastructural futuring not wholly tethered to the empirical observation of the present. Speculative vulnerability can thus account more completely for the, quote, strangeness of the post-pandemic world and facilitate more critical reflection on long-term societal impact of technological solutions that affect the lives of future generations.